<laughs> nah, yeah. I get by, you know, and I write yeah. my songs on air and what have you. Yeah. But playing live is a different thing for me coming yeah. into it so late. Yeah. The yeah. experience of getting up in front of people, pl- playing guitar yeah. and singing is just gets too much yeah. sometimes. So why did you get into it so late as you described? Oh, I, I, I just worked, you know, I, I, yeah. I, I, I was right. a family man. I was married, yeah. had two children. Yeah. And I was uh, worked in the NHS. I was a CPN, they call it. Oh, gosh. Community, community psychiatric nurse. Ah, right, yeah. Um, oh, you must have met me at some point in your <laughs> career then. <laughs> well, man, looking after myself, I was as well. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, and then retirement came and uh, I, I, I retired with depression. Yeah. And, um, and, yeah. Um, and um, the uh, lockdown came. Yeah. I wrote a few songs and... Um, yeah, one thing has led to another, you know, it's yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah. Did you always write songs? Or? No, not really, no. Yeah. It's always something I kind of thought I would try and do one day yeah. and then I, oh, no, but not really. What, what about you? Um, I've, I got into music through uh, through a, a church youth group. The, the, everybody in there... Uh, I was about seventeen at the time, and everybody there could play guitar. And I was, I was kind of um, interested in music. Late on, even though I was seventeen, I, I was kind of late that I became aware of music through uh, the Beatles film Help. Mm. I was watching that, and I, and I watched, uh, I watched the one scene where they're recording in the studio, and they're recording "You're Gonna Lose That Girl," mm. and that was the first time a song actually spoke to me. And I was about. Mm, I was about 14-ish at the time. Uh, and then Gary Newman came out and, of course, you know, huge synth sounds, huge uh, huge soundscapes. Mm. And uh, I, I, I just wanted to know how to do that. Mm. So so that kind of, I got the old Fafai organ from out, out, out the attic and uh, I was sat in the Sunday afternoons, sat in the kitchen trying to write uh, some doodles and... Uh, Made my own notation to try and remember them, but uh, uh, but going back to the Sunday group, the church group, um, I started to learn because everybody else could play, and I thought, well, the only reason I wanted to learn was was it was to be a vehicle for the music I could hear in my head, mm-hmm. and uh, so I started. Uh, <laughs> I can remember even now the first song I wrote, and it was so dreadful it was d-a-e minor mm. and it was just d-a-e minor e minor d-a-e minor e minor f- for uh that that was basically the song like and uh, mm. and the, the the vocal melody just followed the chords mm-hmm. it, it was just tragic but mm. uh but you know, start yeah, yeah 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 and uh i couldn't afford a guitar so mm. uh i i had um an old uh Spanish guitar in in a cupboard, so there were no strings on it. So I had to put cotton and wool into the slots to be able to work out where my fingers would go. All right. So uh, I used cotton and wool as my mm. guides to mm. learn chords. Uh, <laughs> mm. It was dreadful, yeah. but I, but I mean at least every every um, every Friday evening then I could get onto a real guitar and mm. uh, and. Dazzle my friends with what I hadn't yeah. learnt in the week before. Excellent, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, um, I think learning the guitar was. I, I, I played about with the guitar for years, but then at the age of around late teens, probably, yeah. I decided to run away to sea. Oh gosh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, and um, I, uh, I, I remember sailing from Swansea, funnily enough, yeah, and. Um, Took, and I bought a guitar and a chord yeah. book to take with me. It was going to be about a four or five month voyage, you know. Yeah. And um, in my cabin, in my in my Gosh. on the ship, then I'd uh, go through the chords and Good grief. that's how I that's how I t- learned the guitar. Yeah. Really. Yeah. yeah. So they didn't throw you overboard then? Did no, they? Well, uh, <laughs> yeah. the one they didn't, you know. <laughs> but oh. um, yeah, that that was uh, that was the sort of the. St- Although I played the guitar a little bit before, I suppose I honed it a bit then, you know. Yeah, yeah. And um, but didn't start the songwriting until 
not later in life, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, what was the first song you wrote and how old were you at the time? Uh, the first song I wrote properly was probably um, Lines, probably, it's called. Oh, right. It's on uh, the first album. Yeah. And it was all about my sister who'd... Um, who tragically died at, oh. at 40. So <laughs> some some Tra people tell me my songs are, are a bit uh, tragic. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> but um, yeah. yeah, Lines was the first one I, I wrote. Yeah. It was, uh, and it was it was a question of just, you know, laying down the chords firstly. Yeah. And then the words. Um, and then I took it to a studio where a chap called Paul Edwards just transformed it into something Brilliant. wonderful. Brilliant. You know, yeah. and um, I was I was sold then, you know. Yeah. I just wanted to make more songs. Yeah, brilliant. All, yeah. yeah. And you? Um, the first, we've covered the first song I ever wrote, but yeah. uh, but um, the first song I wrote that I thought, oh, yeah, I, I could probably do this, was um, a song called Cataclysms, Catechisms, yeah. which is about, um, the title has nothing really to do with the, with the song, but uh, uh, but I do like doing that. I do uh, like writing a, an interesting title and then, then completely disregarding it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, it's about how um, how people in Wales uh, can sometimes struggle to get well known or struggle through the disadvantages, and then all of a sudden they leave Wales like. Mm. And it's like, why? Mm. You know, I mean, mm. Wales is a lovely country and a beautiful place. And, mm. uh, and uh, you know, if, if ever you want it to be well-known and yet unknown, you could just stay in Wales, like, because people mm. are just down to earth and don't, you know, I don't think they'd pass to you that much. No, no, it's, it's yeah. a beautiful place to live yeah. in there. Okay, this is going to be a very arrhythmic, very atonal version of myths and fables. It's about the societal myths we tell each other to keep ourselves warm at night. It's a happy song. Here we go. They say that it's okay for men to cry We're the ones that broke him with a lie Myths and fables, yeah, yeah Myths and fables, yeah, yeah Say there's no such thing as gateway drugs How can we turn into buzz craze thugs? Myths and fables, yeah, yeah Myths and fables, yeah, yeah Depends on how you count the cost Myths and fables, yeah, yeah Myths and fables, yeah, yeah They say that no one ever really dies Until their memory fades What a lie Myths and fables, yeah, yeah Myths and fables, yeah, yeah it's always what they want And never what we need And we say platitudes Falsehoods smug retorts Can whistle in the wind It's time for truth Dust. 
Just a lust beneath the crumbling crust Myths and fables, yeah, yeah Myths and fables, yeah, yeah It's always what they want And never what we need And we say platitudes Falsehoods make retorts It's time for truth Open eyes No secret lies It's time to choose We're out of time The planet bends And we chose lies Thank you very much. Cheers. So, uh, who are your heroes like? Oh, God. Uh, <clears throat> that's kind of changed throughout yeah, my yeah. life, you know. Oh, gosh, yeah. 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 Um, I remember initially when I was being really taken with uh, the t- some of the Tamla Motown, you know. Oh, yeah. I yeah. loved um, Stevie Wonder, Four Tops, Temptations. Yeah. All that kind of music. Yeah. Um, and then it kind of changed then to, um, I remember when Tubla Bells came out. Oh yeah, that and, was great. And I thought, yeah, I thought Mike Goldfield was, uh, how did he manage to do that? Know, he was yeah. only a kid of 17 and he I played know. all the instruments and, yeah. and he was kind of, I, I still hold him in very high regard. Yeah. So he's, he's one of my sort of uh, heroes. Um, but I got, uh, Pink Floyd. Oh know, yeah. Yeah, I can spot Pink Floyd in your music. Yeah, can you? Yeah, oh, yeah that's, that's a that's a yeah. that's a real compliment. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's definitely there. Yeah, yeah. I love uh, love Pink Floyd, um, and there's other other people like um, you know folk, more folky like uh, John Martin. Oh, I love John Martin. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I learned uh, the slap method of playing uh, oh, with yeah. John Martin. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just listening to him and trying to work out what he was doing, yeah. 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 Dylan, you know. Oh yeah. He's, he's gotta be there somewhere, isn't he? Yeah. 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 And so, who was your main main influences do you oh, think? Oh gosh. Um the Beatles first oh, off. Uh, yeah, Beatles. Then um then Gary Newman and then I started listening to X T C and, and oh, yeah. I love their angular rhythms and yes. their the like disjointedness that comes together. Yes. And um I also Kate Bush was another big oh, one for me. Yeah. yeah. Uh I loved her a kind of like operatic um yes. al- almost uh almost a theatre uh mm. production in a song. And mm. um and then of course uh, I started getting into the harder stuff which is like Pixies, Nirvana, Fugazi, okay. yeah, yeah. Um, Smashing Pumpkins were another big influence yeah. on me. Uh, but uh, yeah, as as you said, th- things change throughout your life, but yeah. but you still go back to the old stuff, like really old. This is yeah. embarrassing, but really old Peter Gabriel Genesis. Oh, I, I love I that. Adored, I adored. I oh, adored that. Yeah. Yeah. So I preferred it with with Peter Gabriel. Yeah, was in yeah. It, yeah. So it, off. Many times it come, comes across as so pompous, but, ah. but it's just brilliant. Like I don't know. Yeah. You know, if, it's, if you like it, you like it. Or exactly. Don't know, you yeah. know, it's, yeah. uh, uh, I love the old Genesis stuff. Um, yeah. I think I think Supper's Ready was probably one yeah. of my favourite uh, yeah. tracks they did off uh, Foxtrot. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Selling England by the Pound, of course. Oh, yeah. That's, that's a great one. one. That's yeah. probably my favourite. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I think that was when Phil. I think I don't know if Phil Collins had taken. One. No, that was still, that was still Gabriel, Gabriel, was it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, this is a song called "Patchouli Girl." Uh, it's all about uh, basically the summer of '76, hippies, and global warming, and patchouli oil, which was commonly worn by all us hippies back then. Okay, thank you. One, two, three, four. <laughs>
the suns Your polis of love Fits like a glove You lay your hands And you heal my soul Like rock and roll And that can go Yeah, because uh, because um, I've got autism. Uh, oh, I, right. I've got Asperger's. Oh, okay. So it so when I sing, it, it tends to be very very flat, and and so I've got to I've got to record myself, listen to it, and then get people to tell me they you should you should be putting emphasis there, and you should be doing it. Yeah. Oh, okay. So the, so I listen to what people say, and then I re-record. Mm trying to put the emotive parts in mm. but I always find that really difficult to, to mm. find naturally mm. I um, maybe it's because of the subject matter I choose to write about but mm. uh, it's hard to it's um, that's always been the hardest part for me is the emotive side yeah, mm. Mm. yeah. My, my grandson's got autism he's, yeah. yeah he's doing doing really really well though, oh you good know? He's, yeah. in a, he's in a like a Specialized yeah. school and ah, all yeah, that, you know, yeah. but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's quite common. Uh, Gary Newman's got Asperger's as uh, well. Really? Yeah. God. yeah. Oh, it is, isn't it? Yeah, there's lots yeah. of people who, in the, you know, you see on the television have got yeah, it, haven't they? Exactly, yeah. yeah. The guy on Nature Watch, I can't think of his name now. Oh. Um, he's on one of those nature programs. Not Chris Packer. Yes. All right, yeah. Yeah, he's yeah. got autism. G- gosh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It kind of a. Kind of explains why um, why he can be very obsessive about uh, yeah. uh, kids, especially when he said we should disobey the government when it comes to or certain did, rules. Is yeah. that what he said? Yeah, is it? yeah, yeah. Uh, but um, but I can understand his viewpoint. Mm. I can see where he's coming from, and uh, but uh, yeah, I've always been very obsessive about music. Mm. Uh, Tanks, World War Two tanks is a big obsession with me. Really? Yeah, and uh, and shapes and angles. That's what fascinates me about tanks. Yeah, and uh, aircraft, of course. Even though I'm terrified of flying, I I adore aircraft. Like, yeah. Oh yeah, I I've got to be I've got to be pilled up and uh, and mm. pills nud up to get on an aircraft. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm a bit the same with it. When I'm in London, I'm always like looking yeah. at the air. I'm fascinated. You tell about trip because yeah. I'm always like, oh, look at the air. Yeah. Um, but, um, uh, and uh, tanks. I, 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 I've been somewhere. Uh, where did I go? Bovington. Bovington, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 But you've been there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, gosh. Couldn't get me out of it. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. 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 Oh.